These are my best three Asian noodle soup recipes and you guys can make them all at home. Number three, Thai beef noodle soup. So the real secret here guys is in the noodle soup broth. So we want to start off with a flavor paste that's going to make our soup extra special. So I'm going to start off with some coriander roots. Now this part of the coriander has heaps of flavor. Even if you don't love coriander, this is going to be like a real background flavor and just give some real sort of depth and umami to our soup. All right, now we also want some garlic and then a good few spoons of some black peppercorns. And I just want to make a rough paste here. Now you could also do this in a blender, but if you're doing it that way, just use ground black pepper because sometimes you won't get the whole peppercorns all ground up nice and fine. Okay, so this is the texture we're looking for. And already the smell of this paste is making me very hungry. So to start off with, we just need a little bit of oil so we can fry off our paste and get all the aromas and flavors going. And now I'm adding in my beef. I'm using chuck steak here, and that's got a little bit of fat and connective tissue running through it. So it means that we're going to get a really soft, tender piece of beef at the end of our slow cooking here. Okay, so now that we've got some good color on that beef and I can smell that paste as well, I'm going to add in some more flavor. We want some star anise on a cinnamon stick, some soy sauce, some dark soy sauce for some beautiful color and some chicken or beef stock. Now bring that up to a gentle simmer, pop the lid on and you want to let that bubble away and do its work for about an hour and a half. Now while that beef is simmering, you might just want to take a ladle and skim off any of the sort of bits and pieces that sort of rise up to the top there. Mm, now I can see that that beef is beautifully tender and the smell of that broth is so amazing. Oh, I've been hungry for the last 90 minutes smelling that simmering away. Now what we want to do is find those whole spices that we put in there and just fish those out. And then I like to scoop out my beef pieces and just run a knife through them so they've got this really nice sort of pulled beef texture. That's the perfect texture, nice and soft tender. Now I'll just set that meaty goodness aside for later. So we are doing this Thai street food style so I'm going to use some Asian beef balls and then I just want some green vegetable as well so I'm going to slice these into nice little pieces and I'll put that into the soup just to warm through. I like those vegetables to stay a little crunchy so I just put them in at the end. Now I'm using what we call sen lek in Thai and that is a thin rice noodle and the best way to deal with these is to soak them in some just room temperature water for about 10 or 15 minutes until they're pliable and a little soft and that way you can pull out the handful that you need, so about a handful per person and then we just quickly blanch that in some boiling water. I find that doing the noodles this way keeps them from all clumping up and getting all sticky. And now the all important taste test. I'm gonna check my broth for some last minute seasoning. Mmm, that's such a deep savory flavor. That's really, really quite amazing that we've achieved that in only 90 minutes. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit more fish sauce. So if you were eating this street side or in a restaurant in Thailand, you would have fish sauce and different seasonings at the table, but when I'm cooking this at home for family, I like to do the seasoning myself in the pot. That way I make sure everyone gets just the right balance of flavor. Okay, so these noodles are ready and I'll just portion them out into my bowls. And now you wanna scoop out some of those beef balls and those Asian vegetables, put that onto your bowl. And then I want a good handful of some of that braised beef. Mm, and now that beautiful broth. Now the final finishing touches, just a little bit of bean shoots on the top and some Thai basil as well. Number two, spicy pork miso noodle soup. 
So it's raining here at the moment in Bangkok and so it's the perfect weather for this kind of comforting soup. I'm going to get started on our spicy pork part first and just a little bit of oil into my pan. There are a few little secret ingredients that are going to make this soup extra special so we'll get to those in a minute but first of all I'm going to start off with a bit of garlic. Already smelling good. I just want some pork mince. So I can see that pork is almost cooked through, so time for special ingredient number one. I am using some Korean gochujang chili paste. Now it's a fermented chili paste and it's not super spicy, so don't be too worried about that, but it adds a really beautiful, almost smoky kind of flavor, chili flavor. Now because the gochujang isn't incredibly spicy and I like things incredibly spicy. So I'm going to add a little bit of chili powder. Now that's completely optional. And then I want some soy sauce as well. And already the color of that pork is brightening up my day. Once that pork is cooked, just set it aside for a little bit later. And now for my veggies. So you could use whatever you've got in your fridge or whatever particular vegetables you would like. But I've got some shiitake mushrooms here and some bok choy as well. And I just slice those mushrooms. I tend to find that the stem part of that shiitake is a little bit tough, so I always take that out. Okay, and now for my green vegetables. Now these are quite small, so I'm just gonna slice them in half. Now other great things to use here would be baby spinach or sugar snap peas, um, just about any vegetable you like. Now I'm starting off with some chicken stock and you could use homemade or store-bought you know often store-bought is what I've got at home so that's what I'm going to be using and this is our secret ingredient number two and this is really going to elevate this store-bought stock and that is some shiro miso paste or white miso paste another kick of umami that we're adding to our dish okay and then a little dash of soy sauce just to get things going even more in there and you just want to bring this up to a gentle simmer and I like to sort of smush down and blend in that miso paste you can sort of pick up little bits of it in your ladle and then use a teaspoon to help it dissolve a little as that soup heats up wow it's really starting to rain heavy out there can you guys hear that ah this is the perfect weather for this soup now that miso paste has dissolved into the soup, I'm going to add in my vegetables. So I'm going to put these shiitake mushrooms in and my green vegetables too. And you just want to give this a few minutes until those vegetables are cooked. So those greens are nice and wilted and those shiitake mushrooms have given up some of their flavor to that broth. Mm, it smells so good. It's amazing what a few simple ingredients can do. So there are a couple of ways you can serve this. You can serve it as it is with the spicy pork on top. I'm going to go with some noodles today. So I've just got some ramen noodles. I'm going to ladle that soup over the top. And then of course I want a nice scoop of that spicy pork that we made. Mm. And to me a noodle soup like this just isn't complete without an egg. And then we want a little bit of spring onion, a little sprinkling of sesame seeds. Mm, now it's time to get comfy and warm. Number one, ultimate Thai Tom Yum noodle soup. Okay guys, so we're pretty much like combining three of my very favorite things in the whole world. Thai tom yum soup, chewy noodles, dumplings. Ah, what could be better? I'm so excited. Okay, so we're gonna make our tom yum soup from scratch. It's super easy, just wait and see. Okay, so I have these spicy bird's eye chilies and you gotta go spicy with tom yum. It's not a proper Thai tom yum soup without the real kick of spice. So these are bird's eye chilies. Whatever are really spicy chilies in your area, use those ones. I'm going with about five or six here. Yes, it's gonna be hot. Now I wanna bruise these up. Now the great thing about using a mortar and pestle is that you don't just 
chop through the chili, you're actually releasing and smushing out, and that's a technical term I'm sure, smushing out all the beautiful oils and aromas from the chili. So there is method to using this particular mortar and pestle technique. Okay, so you don't want this too fine. This is the sort of thing that you're looking for. And just put that into a bowl for a bit later. So now for our aromatics. The thing that I love about this soup is it's pure magic. You're literally turning water into something that tastes amazing. And you just want to bruise that with the bottom of your knife and then cut it into battens. Okay, now that goes into our water. So I've just got that on a low heat. And then the other crucial ingredient is galangal. You're gonna need a special trip to your Asian grocer for this one, but this is what it looks like. Let me compare it to ginger for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Galangal has a little bit of a pink tinge to the edges of it. You can see that the ginger is a lot browner in color, a lot darker, and galangal, has a much more like pine wood citrus kind of aroma and flavor. So you really can't substitute ginger for this. You're gonna have to go for the real thing. The great news is that this freezes really easily. So if you get a hold of some, put it in your freezer. Okay, now they go into the water as well. And our final aromatic is kaffir lime leaves. Now you just need to take the stem out of the middle of those. These also freeze really well. So if you are doing a trip, grab a whole bunch of these and keep them in your freezer too. Okay, and the trick here is to grab a hold of your leaves and smush them all together. That will start releasing all of the flavor and the aroma. Now, I just wanna let this come up to a simmer until I can smell all those beautiful aromatics. So a couple of minutes in there. Okay, so now let's talk about mushrooms. So the traditional Thai mushroom is called het phang. In English, we call it straw mushroom. Kinda looks like this guy. And when you slice it open, you'll see this is the texture inside. If you can't get a hold of these, but mushrooms will do just fine. And then we also want some cherry tomatoes. Our vegetables are done. Let's talk about chili paste. Now I'm using a traditional Thai chili paste. It's called Nam Prik Pao. It's a roasted red chili paste. It kind of has this jammy consistency. It's got things like shallots and garlic and tamarind and yummy stuff in it. So you can grab this from an Asian grocer or you can check out my YouTube channel and make it from scratch yourself. Up to you. Anyway, so that goes into our water which is now smelling beautifully aromatic and then we also want those pounded chilies already I'm loving this spicy color and then another ingredient that might surprise you guys I'm going to use evaporated milk so there are two types of tom yum in Thailand there's nam sai and nam con nam con is the one that's creamy and you can use coconut milk but actually most restaurants use evaporated milk so there you go little restaurant tip for you so I'm going to add a couple of spoonfuls of that now our prawns and the mushrooms and tomatoes. Now just let everything come up to a simmer. I want those prawns to cook. I want all those flavors to marry together into a really beautiful spicy soup. Okay, our soup is looking good. Now the final stage of making a tom yum is the most important. It's the seasoning stage. So first up we want some limes and you just wanna push down on those so that you're crushing the inside. You can get the most amount of juice as possible. And now what I like to do with this seasoning stage is make sure that my soup is off the heat so it's not going to boil anymore. If I keep boiling this after I add the lime juice it kind of dilutes the tanginess if you like. You don't get that fresh hit of lime. Now the other part of the seasoning for this at the end is your fish sauce and your sugar. So you have limes, fish sauce, sugar. So these three things are almost like your salt and pepper that you would have in western cooking. You're going to use all three to finish off and round out the flavors of this soup. So add your lime juice in and the end flavor here should be predominantly spicy and tangy and then just a little bit salty and a tiny little touch of sweetness. So we've got our tangy. I'm going to add my fish sauce for the salty and then just a little dash of sugar first. I can always add more but I can't take it out so I won't put it all in. And here's where we taste because depending on your chili paste or depending on how sour the limes are in your region or what fish sauce you're using, you might need more of any of those things. So let's have a taste. Mm. Mm. Oh, tangy and spicy, love it. Okay, I need a little bit more lime juice for my taste. Okay, let's see how we're going. Mmm, yep, that's it. Really tangy, salty, spicy. 
all the good things. Okay, let's get onto our dumplings. So this is totally an optional extra, but you know, why not go all out if you're gonna make something from scratch? So I'm gonna make some really simple pork wonton dumplings to go in my noodle soup. Got some pork mince. I want a little bit of white pepper, some fish sauce. A little bit of water. I always find adding some moisture into a dumpling mix keeps it a bit softer on the inside. And then a little smattering of garlic. And now here's the key. You want to vigorously mix this until we see the pork get really nice and sticky. Now this is as easy as plonking a fair bit of pork into the center of a wonton wrapper. Grab some water, fold it over. I like my wonton guys to be quite full and fat. Who doesn't like a fat dumpling? Okay, and that goes straight into some boiling water. So let those dumplings just simmer away until they're cooked through. And now it's time to serve everything up, my favorite part. So we've got some noodles here. I'm using some fresh Chinese egg noodles. You could use whatever noodles that you like. And then just pour over some of that spicy soup. And now your wontons, just slide those on top. And of course, because you know, you can't have a good bowl of noodle soup, I think without an egg. So I'm gonna pop an egg on there as well. And just a few little bits of coriander. And there you have it guys, one spicy bowl of heaven. Ah, oh, so good. Mm. The noodle slurp, you gotta do it guys. Oh, so good. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks guys. Boot.